Okay, good morning everyone. Guten Morgen alle zusammen. Lass uns mit einem Gebet anfangen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lieber Himmlischer Vater, Lord, we thank you for watching us through the night. Herr, wir danken dir, dass du uns über die Nacht bewacht hast. And we thank you that we can come and open your word this morning. Und wir danken dir, dass wir heute Morgen kommen können und dein Wort öffnen können. That your Holy Spirit can speak to us. Dass dein Heiliger Geist zu uns sprechen kann. And bring conviction upon our hearts. Und Überführung über unser Herz bringen kann. And that the light might find entrance. Und dass das Licht Eingang findet. That your uh, work in our hearts would be complete. Dass das Werk, also dein Werk in unseren Herzen vervollständigt werden kann. We would purge and cleanse and purify us. Dass es uns reinigen und läutern und weiß machen wird. And that we would be your people according to the prophets that have long spoken of this time. Und dass wir dein Volk werden, um, wovon die Propheten seit langer Zeit über diese Zeit gesprochen haben. That your glory would shine forth in this darkened world. Dass deine Herrlichkeit in dieser verdunkelten Welt hervorscheinen kann. And bring many to know uh, your holy name. Und viele dazu bringen kann, deinen heiligen Namen zu kennen. So please bless us now as we discuss this topic. Bitte segne uns jetzt, wenn wir dieses Thema besprechen. And may we take these things to our hearts. Und mögen wir diese Dinge uns zu Herzen nehmen. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Und wir bitten das im Namen Jesu. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we go to the notes. Wenn wir zu den Notizen gehen. Just of late, we were looking at this uh, subject about marriage. Vor kurzem haben wir uns das Thema über die Ehe angeschaut. And the Lord said that He will restore the marriage at the end of the world. Und right? der Herr hat gesagt, dass er die Ehe am Ende der Welt wiederherstellen wird. Okay, and I mean the literal marriage, but also spiritually. Also die buchstäbliche Ehe, aber auch die geistliche. And when He restores that marriage, His glory. Shall shine forth, right? Wenn er diese Ehe wiederherstellt, wird seine Herrlichkeit hervorleuchten. Okay, so, but we want to look at this theme this morning about this jealous husband. Über das right? Thema wollen wir uns heute Morgen anschauen über diesen eifersüchtigen Ehemann. Okay, now the Lord uses the natural to teach us the spiritual. Der Herr benutzt das Natürliche, um uns das Geistliche zu lernen. And um, I remember my times in the world. Und ich kann mich an die Zeit, meine Zeit in der Welt erinnern. And you know, um, anyway, for a man at least, there's nothing worse than having a woman whose eye is on another man, right? Für einen Mann ähm, zumindest ist das ähm, gibt es nichts Schlimmeres als dass eine Frau ihre Auge auf einen anderen Mann hat. Okay, and the Lord teaches, uses these natural things to teach us. Spiritual lessons, Und right? der Herr benutzt diese natürlichen Dinge, um geistliche Lektionen zu lernen. He says, look how your heart is when your wife or your girlfriend or whatever is doting after somebody else. Right? Er sagt, schau wie dein Herz ist, wenn deine Frau oder deine Freundin oder was auch immer, also wenn ihr Herz jemand für jemand anderen schwärmt. Or even vice versa, when a, when a woman has a man and the man is doting after another woman. Right? Oder umgekehrt, wenn eine Frau einen Mann hat und der Mann schwärmt für eine andere Frau. Okay, and the Lord uses this to teach us how it is when we, right, go after this other husband. Und right? der Herr lehrt uns, wie das ist, wenn wir nach diesem anderen Ehemann gehen. Okay, so let's begin by going to John 17, verse 3. Wir fangen an, indem wir zu Johannes 17, Vers 3 gehen. It says, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. He's the only true husband. Er ist der einzig wahre Ehemann. Yes, and it's life eternal, that we might know him. Und das ist das ewige Leben, das wir ihn kennen mögen. And in 1 John 2 and verse 3, in 1. Johannes 2 and verse 3, it says, And hereby we do know him, that we, we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in 
Him. Right? It's very important that the truth in us is what brings us to keep His commandments. Right? It's very important that the truth in us is what brings us to keep His commandments. So if, the, if you're not keeping his commandments, the truth has never entered into your heart. Amen. And and once it's entered in your heart, then you can see you know your husband, right? Okay, so let's go to his commandments. Right? Because it says, he that saith, I know him, keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. Right? Sagt er, der sagt, dass er ihn kennt und nicht seine Gebote hält, ist ein Lügner. Okay, in Exodus 20, Vers 1. In 2. Mose 20, Vers 1. It says, and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments right so we're not to bow down and worship these other gods because he's a jealous god right also also nicht niederbeugen und diese anderen götter anbeten weil er ist ein eifersüchtiger gott and if you love him he'll show you mercy und wenn right? du ihn liebst dann wird er dir gnade zeigen but if you hate him right it says he will visit the iniquity upon you right aber wenn du ihn hast dann sagt es wird er deine schuld auf It's a subject of Bible prophecy, right? Okay, because Christ, when he says, "Tarry till I return," what does he say about his people? Weil wenn Christus sagt, wartet bis ich wieder zurückkomme, was sagt das über sein Volk? Says his citizens hated him, right? Seine Bürger haben ihn gehasst. Okay, because it shows us that we run off after our own idols, right? Das zeigt uns, dass wir nach unseren eigenen Götzen, also unseren eigenen Götzen nachrennen. Okay, and these two commandments, or, or these commandments are summarized under two commandments, right? Und diese Gebote werden unter zwei Geboten zusammengefasst. Okay, if we go to Matthew 22, verse 36. Und wenn wir zu Matthäus 22, Vers 36 gehen, Says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, because it says, You shall have no other gods before me. Right? Es sagt, hmm. dass du keine anderen Götter neben ihn haben sollst. The second is like unto it: Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang. All the law and the prophets, right? So the the whole Bible is dependent upon this, right? The whole Bible is davon abhängig. An understanding of what it means to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. So this is a understanding of how you love your God with your whole heart, soul, and strength, and understand love, and your neighbor as yourself. Okay. And the Lord teaches us the second great commandment through a literal marriage on earth, right? Und der Herr lehrt uns das zweite große Gebot durch um, die buchstäbliche Ehe auf der Erde. Right? Richtig. Because when you when two become when two get married, they become one flesh, right? Weil wenn zwei verheiratet werden, dann werden sie ein Fleisch. And it says, no man hath hated his own flesh, right? Sagt, kein Mensch hat sein eigenes Fleisch gehasst. So what does he do to the other one? Was macht er also mit dem anderen? Loves him how? Wie liebt er ihn? As himself. As himself, mm -hmm. right? Selbst. That's the whole point, right? You don't, you don't, you can't hate your own flesh, right? Das ist der ganze Punkt, du kannst dein eigenes Fleisch ja nicht hassen. And if you don't love him, the only option is that you 
Hitte, right? Wenn du sie nicht liebst, dann ist die andere, einzige andere Option, dass du sie hast. Okay, and th this is it. When you love your neighbor as yourself, it's, it's only because you love God supremely, right? Also, wenn du deinen Nächsten wie dich selbst äh, liebst, dann ist es nur, weil du Gott ähm, also zu allererst liebst oder am meisten liebst. Okay, and in Romans 3, 20, und in Römer 3 und Vers 20, it says, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin, right? The whole purpose of the law is to reveal our sin, right? Der ganze Zweck des Gesetzes ist, unsere Sünde zu offenbaren. Now, the reason why we're doing this topic is because Firstly, the Lord wants to marry us, right? Der Grund, warum wir dieses Thema anschauen, ist, weil zuallererst möchte der Herr uns heiraten. And secondly, this great test is before us, Und right? zweitens, dieser große Test ist vor uns. Okay, and therefore, this is relevant, this is present truth for us, Deswegen right? ist das relevant, das ist gegenwärtige Wahrheit für uns. Okay, so, next head and rejecting the law, right? Nächste Überschrift, das Gesetz um, verwerfen. Okay, now remember that the law and the prophets, everything hangs on the balance of understanding these two great commandments, right? Und denk daran, also das Gesetz und die Propheten, also alles hängt in der Waagschale, um diese zwei großen Gebote zu So, having no other verstehen. gods before him, right? Also, dass man keine anderen Götter neben ihm hat. It says, in rejecting the truth, men reject its author. In trampling upon the law of God, they deny the authority of the lawgiver. It is as easy to make an idol of false doctrines and theories as to fashion an idol of wood or stone. By misrepresenting the attributes of God, Satan leads men to conceive of him in a false manner. With many, a, philosoph a philosophical idol is enthroned in the place of Jehovah. While the living God, as he is revealed in his word, in Christ, and in the works of creation, is worshipped by but few. Thousands deify nature while they deny the God of nature. Though in a different form, idolatry exists in the Christian world today, as verily as it existed among ancient Israel in the days of Elijah. The God of many professedly wise men, of philosophers, poets, politicians, journalists, the God of polished, fashionable circles, of many colleges and universities, even of some theological institutions, is little better than Baal, the sun god of Phoenicia. Right? So, it's saying that very few of us, I mean in her time, worship the true God. Right. Das sagt, dass sehr wenige von uns, also sie hat auch über ihre Zeit gesprochen, die beten den wahren Gott an. Okay, so when we have these philosophical idols in our heart, we are making him jealous, right? Wenn wir diese philosophischen Götzen in unseren Herzen haben, dann machen wir ihn eifersüchtig. We are going after other gods. Wir gehen right? anderen Göttern nach. It's not the God of the Bible. Das ist nicht der Gott der Bibel. Okay, and so... The Lord needs to reveal this to us, right? Der Herr muss uns dies offenbaren. Okay, so let's look at the experience of Isaiah, these next two quotes. Schauen wir jetzt in den nächsten zwei Zitaten die Erfahrung über Jesaja an. Isaiah had denounced the sin of others, but now he sees himself exposed to the same condemnation he had pronounced upon them. He had been satisfied with a cold, lifeless ceremony in his worship of God. So, was he worshipping the true God? Hat er den wahren Gott angebetet? No, I'm not asking if he thought that. I'm asking, was he worshipping the true God? Also, ich frage nicht, ob er das gedacht hat, sondern ob er den wahren Gott angebetet hat. No, the answer is no, right? If you hold one idol in your heart, you're worshiping another god. Right? He had been satisfied with the cold, lifeless ceremony is worship of God. He had not known this until the vision was given him of the Lord. How little now appeared his wisdom and talents as he looked upon the sacredness and majesty of the sanctuary. How unworthy he was, how unfitted for sacred service. His view of himself might be expressed in the language of the Apostle Paul, 
O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Right? So he realized he was a sinner. Right? Er also erkannt, dass er ein Sünder war. And that he was guilty of worshiping other gods. Und dass right? er schuldig daran geworden ist, andere Götter zu anbeten. It says, but relief was sent to Isaiah in his distress. He says, then flew one of the seraphim unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. So what did he find? Was hat er also gefunden? He found mercy, right? Gnade gefunden. Okay, so first of all, the Lord revealed to him his sin. Also zuallererst hat der Herr ihm seine Sünde offenbart. And then Isaiah cried out, right? Und dann hat Jesaja nach ihm ausgerufen. Confessed his sin, right? Seine Sünden bekannt. And he found mercy. Und er hat Gnade gefunden. Right? Richtig. But had he not had it revealed to him, he had no sin, right? Und wäre ihm das nicht offenbart worden, dann hätte er keine Sünde gehabt. The Lord says, had I not come and spoken to you, you would have had no sin, but now you have no cloak for your sin, right? Hat gesagt, ähm, wäre ich nicht zu euch gekommen und zu euch gesprochen, hättet ihr keine Sünde, aber nun habt ihr kein Gewand für eure Sünde. Okay, next quote. Nächstes Zitat. The vision given to Isaiah represents the condition of God's people in the last days. So whose condition is it? Wessen Zustand ist das? Our condition, Unser right? Zustand. We are the people in present truth who claim to follow the true God, right? Sind die Leute in der gegenwärtigen äh, Wahrheitsbewegung, die eben behaupten, dem wahren Gott zu folgen. It says they are privileged to see by faith the work that is going forward in the heavenly sanctuary. And have we been privileged by faith to see that work? Und hatten wir dieses Privileg durch Glauben dieses Werk zu sehen? Yes. Yeah. And the temple of God was opened in heaven and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. As they look by faith into the Holy of Holies and see the work of Christ in the heavenly sanctuary, they perceive that they are a people of unclean lips, a people whose lips have often spoken vanity and whose talents have not been sanctified and employed to the glory of God. Well may they despair as they contrast their own weakness and unworthiness with the purity and loveliness of the glorious character of Christ. So in Isaiah's case, the veil was removed and he saw God's glory, right? In the case of Isaiah, the veil was removed and he saw the glory of God. Okay, and it says, but if they, like Isaiah, will receive the impression the Lord designed shall be made upon the heart, if they will humble their souls before God, there is hope for them. So if we accept what he reveals to us, there's hope for us, right? Wenn wir das annehmen, was der Herr uns offenbart, dann gibt es Hoffnung für uns. The bow of promise is above the throne. And what does the bow of promise represent? Und was stellt der Bogen der Verheißung dar? It's this mercy, it's his covenant, right? Es ist die Gnade, es ist sein Bund. And the work done for Isaiah will be performed in them. God will respond to the petitions coming from the contrite heart. Right? So, if you're brought to repentance with a broken and contrite spirit, there is mercy for you, right? Wenn du zur Buße gebracht wirst und mit einem zerschlagenen, zerbrochenen Geist, dann gibt es Gnade für dich. Okay, so let's go to Jeremiah chapter 3. Geht jetzt zu Jeremia Kapitel 3. Now, um, we're going through this because this is our experience, right? Wir gehen dadurch, weil das ist eben unsere Erfahrung. This is what's going to happen to us exactly, right? Das wird genau uh, so passieren mit uns. Okay. Our husband is going to reveal to us that we've been unfaithful to him. Unser right? Ehemann wird uns offenbaren, dass wir ähm, ihm untreu waren. That we hate him and we don't love him, right? Dass wir ihn hassen und nicht lieben. That our eyes have been on these other gods, Dass right? unsere Augen auf diesen anderen Göttern waren. In Jeremiah 3, verse 1, it says, Jeremiah 3, verse 1 sagt, They say, if a man put away his wife, and she go from him, and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the har harlot with how many lovers? Wie vielen Liebhabern? Many lovers. Mit vielen right? Liebhabern. 
Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places, and see where thou hast not been lying with. In the ways hast thou sat for them as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withholden, and there hath been no ladder rain, and thou hast a whore's forehead, and thou refusest to be ashamed. Wilt thou not from this time cry unto me, my father, thou art the guide of my youth? Right? This first year. So this, when. This speaks about unbelief, the first part. Yes, it doesn't matter. This is the experience you've got to go through, right? Also, that spricht uh, darüber nach der ersten Geburt, aber das ist ja Sache, weil das ist die Erfahrung, durch die du durchgehen musst. Lord demonstrates the end by the beginning, right? The Herr demonstriert das Ende durch den Anfang. Okay, so the, the point is that he's going to show us all these other gods that we've been lying with, right? The point is that he will show us all these other gods that we've been lying with. That until, unless we put these idols away, he can't be our husband, right? Seit denn, dass wir diese Götzen ablegen, wird kann er nicht unser Ehemann sein. Okay, go to Numbers chapter 5. Geht zu 4. Mose Kapitel 5. Verse 11. In Vers 11. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If any man's wife go aside and commit a trespass against him, and a man lie with her carnally, and it be hid from the eyes of her husband, and be kept clothed, and she be defiled, and there be no witness against her, neither she be taken with the manner. And the spirit of jealousy come upon him. So who is this? Wer ist das? It's a jealous husband, das right? Ein and the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be defiled. Or if the spirit of jealousy uh, come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be not defiled. Then shall the man bring his wife unto the priest, and he shall bring her offering for her the tenth part of an ephah of barley meal. He shall pour no oil upon it, nor put frankincense thereon, for it is an offering of jealousy, an offering of memorial, bringing iniquity to remembrance. So what's its purpose? What is the Zweck davon? To reveal things that you've forgotten about, right? Also Dinge zu offenbaren, die du vergessen hast. Things that you maybe not have realized. Sachen, right? die du noch nicht realisiert haben, Max. And it says about Isaiah, he had not known this until it was revealed to him, right? Und Jesaja sagt es, er hat das nicht gewusst, bis es ihm offenbart wurde. It says, and the priest shall bring her near and set her before the Lord, and the priest shall take holy water. In an earthen vessel, and of the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle, the priest shall take and put it into the water. Okay, so what is holy water? Was ist heiliges Wasser? Yeah, yes, but where does it, where does, if there was such a thing as holy water, where would it come from? Das Wort Gottes, aber wenn es etwas gibt wie heiliges Wasser, woher würde das dann kommen? It come from heaven, right? Vom Himmel. Right. So, the point is, which, which water comes from heaven? Der Punkt ist, welches Wasser kommt vom Himmel? Okay. Yeah, the, which rain? The former and the latter, der right? Der Früh und der Spätregen. Okay. And the, and the former rain is what cleanses us, right? Der Frühregen reinigt uns. So, when we are clean, we can receive the... Mit, wenn wir rein sind, ladder, right? dann können wir den Spätring erhalten. Okay, so, um, this holy water, I want to, us to understand, is the former rain, right? It's what's going to reveal our sin, right? Ich möchte euch right? zu verstehen geben, dass dieses heilige Wasser eben der Frühring ist und das wird unsere Sünde offenbaren. Vers 18. Vers 18. And the priest shall set the woman before the Lord and uncover the woman's head. And put the offering of memorial in her hands, which is the jealousy offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causeth the curse. And the priest shall charge her by an oath, and say unto the woman, If no man have lain with thee, 
And if thou hast not gone aside to uncleanness with another instead of thy husband, be thou free from this bitter water that causeth the curse. But if thou hast gone aside to another instead of thy husband, and if thou be defiled, and some man have lain with thee beside thine husband, then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing, and the priest shall say unto the woman, The Lord make thee a curse, and an oath among the people, when the Lord doth make thy thigh to rot, and thy belly to swell. So, which oath is the curse in the Bible? Also, welcher Schwur ist ähm, dieser Fluch in der Bibel? Yes, the, the, the 25, 20, the seven times, right? 25, 20, also die sieben Zeiten. Okay, it's the destruction of Jerusalem, ist right? Die Zerstörung von Jerusalem. Which is a pro progressive re revelation, right? Das ist eine progressive Offenbarung. It says, um, And this water that causeth the curse shall go into thy bowels to make thy belly to swell and thy thigh to rot. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. And the priest shall write these curses in a book, and he shall blot them out with the bitter water. And he shall cause the woman to drink the bitter water that causeth the curse, and the water that causeth the curse shall enter into her and become bitter. Right? So when you drink this water, what's going to happen? When you drink this water, trinkst, what's going to happen? It's going to be bitter, right? It's bitter, fine. Then the priest shall take the jealousy offering out of the woman's hand and shall wave the offering before the Lord and offer it upon the altar. And the priest shall take a handful of the offering, even the memorial thereof, and burn it upon the altar. And afterward shall cause the woman to drink the water. And when he hath made her to drink the water, then it shall come to pass that if she be defiled, and have done trespass against her husband, that the water that causeth the curse shall enter into her and become bitter, and her belly shall swell, and her thigh shall rot, and the woman shall be a curse among the people. And if the woman be not defiled, but be clean, then she shall be free, and shall conceive seed. This is the law of jealousies. When a wife goeth aside to another instead of her husband, and is defiled. So according to the scripture, how many of us have not gone after another husband? Gemäß der Schrift, wie viele von uns sind nicht nach einem anderen Ehemann nachgegangen? None. Keiner. For all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God, right? Und alle haben gesündigt und verfehlen die Herrlichkeit äh, Gottes. Okay, so, <laughs> right, but there's this option here that says if the woman be not defiled but be clean, then she shall be free and shall conceive seed. Right? Diese Option hier in Vers 28. Okay, so if, if there's none, how can there be a woman that can be free? Right? Wenn es keinen gibt, wie gibt es dann eine Frau, die frei davon wird? Okay, so that's what we want to look at, right? Das wollen wir uns anschauen. So go to Matthew 20 in verse 20. Geht zu Matthäus 20 und Vers 20. It says, Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshipping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She saith unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand in the kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup? that I shall drink of, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. They say unto him, We are able. And he saith to them, Ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. So what is the cup? This is also the cake. It's the cross, right? It's the cross. So this bitter cup that he's going to cause you to drink is you must go to the cross, right? Dieser bittere Kelch, den du trinken sollst, ist eben, dass du zum Kreuz gehen musst. And if you go to the cross, what do you receive? Wenn du zum Kreuz gehst, was erhältst du? A crown. Eine Krone. Right? But if you refuse to go to the cross, right, you will remain unclean, right? Wenn du dich weigerst, zum Kreuz zu gehen, dann wirst du unrein bleiben. Okay, so, we will see in a moment, right? Wir werden das gleich noch sehen. So he says, 
you will drink of this cup, right? Er sagt also, ihr werdet von diesem Kelch trinken. Okay, and if you go to John uh, 6 and verse uh, 51. Wenn ihr zu Johannes 6, Vers 51 geht. It says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Right? Kein Leben in euch. What have you got to do to have life? Was musst du tun, um Leben zu eat his flesh and drink his blood. Sein Fleisch right? essen und sein Blut trinken. Okay. And go to Matthew 26. Und geht zu Matthäus 26. And verse 26. Und Vers 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. How much were they to drink? Wie viel sollten sie davon trinken? All of it, right? Alles. And this is his blood, right? Das ist sein Blut. Because it says, For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Right? So, it's this cup that you have to drink, right? Es ist dieser Kelch, den du trinken musst. And you have to drink all of it. Du musst alles davon trinken. Okay, it's the New Testament, right? Das ist das neue Bündnis, okay. der neue Bund. Okay, just go to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Wir gehen zu 2. Korinther, Kapitel 2. In verse 1. Vers 1. Because it speaks about this here, right? Weil darüber spricht es hier. It says, do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we, as some others, epistles of condemnation, condemn, commendation to you, or letters of commendation from you? Ye are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men, for as much as ye... Second Corinthians chapter 3. Ah. What did I, did I say too? Sorry, yes. for, for chapter 3. Zweite Korinther, Kapitel 3, Abvers 1. It says, verse 3. Also jetzt Vers 3. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And as such trust we have through Christ to God what? Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also hath made us able ministers of the what? The New Testament. Okay, so in order for them to, to be these ministers of the New Testament, they had to drink the cup, right? Damit sie diese Diener des Neuen Testaments sein können, it says, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Right? Geist gibt Leben. Okay. It says, but if the ministration of death, written and graven in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. Now, what did it call it? It says, the ministration of death. Death, right? Wie haben sie das genannt? Das war dieser Dienst des Todes. Isaiah said, who can deliver me, or who shall deliver me from this body of this death, right? Isaiah hat gesagt, wer kann mich von diesem Todesleib erlösen? Okay, because he was under this old ministration, right? Er war unter diesem alten Dienst. It says, Verse 8. Verse 8. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. 
So it calls this New Testament, uh, sorry, the, the Old Testament, the ministration of condemnation. Es nennt right? also dieses alte Testament, dieser Dienst der Verdammnis. Okay, so my question is, when does it condemn you? Und die Frage ist, also wann verdammt es dich? Yeah, when it's revealed to you. Wenn so, es dir offenbart wird. Yeah, it will do, but if you don't realize that, right, this is why he's making you drink this cup, right? Also, wenn du diese anderen Ehemänner hast, aber wenn du das nicht weißt, ähm, dann ähm, also ist es ja eigentlich erst, wenn er dir diesen Kelch gibt zu trinken, dass er dir das offenbart. Okay, it says, um, Vers 13. Vers 13. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, but that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished, but their minds were what? Blinded. Verblendet. Okay, so they don't know their sin, right? Sie kennen also ihre Sünde nicht. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. So when the veil was removed, Isaiah saw his condemnation, right? Als der Vorhang hinweggenommen wurde, hat Jesaja seine Verdammung. Es sagt, the same condemnation came upon him, right? Dieselbe Verdammung kam über ihn. Because the law was now revealed to him, right? Weil ihm jetzt das Gesetz offenbart wurde. It says, but even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open faces in a glass, uh, Behold, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image. So when the veil was removed, Isaiah saw the glory of the Lord, right? Als der Vorhang hinweggenommen wurde, da hat Jesaja die Herrlichkeit des Herrn gesehen. What did it reveal to him? Was hat es ihm offenbart? What did it reveal to him? Yeah, how many other husbands he had, right? Also wie viele andere Ehemänner er hatte. But there was hope for him, right? Es gab says, right? Ihn Hoffnung, hat es okay, because when you read uh, the Old Testament, it says that that whatever finds those husbands in you, you're going to be cursed, right? Das Alte Testament zeigt, dass um, wenn er diese anderen Ehemänner in dir findet, dann wirst du verflucht werden. But it says if it doesn't find them in you, you will be free. Aber es sagt, wenn er das nicht in dir findet, wirst du frei sein. But how can it not find them in you if we've all sinned? Right? Aber wie kann er das nicht in dir finden, wenn wir alle gesündigt haben? Okay, so the, the woman that set free has to be this woman that cried out for mercy, right? Die Frau, die also freigesetzt wird, ist diese Frau, die nach ähm, Gnade gerufen hat. When she was made to drink that cup, she realized, she confessed her sin openly, right? Als sie diesen Kelch trinken musste, da hat sie das realisiert und ihre Sünde offen bekannt. And the Lord had mercy upon her, right? Gnade mit ihr. But the one that refused to accept the cup, right? Diejenige, die sich geweigert hat, diesen Kelch anzunehmen. Because she knew she was guilty. Weil sie right? wusste, dass sie schuldig war. And refused to accept the rebuke. Und sich right? geweigert hat, diesen Tadel anzunehmen. You remain filthy and you will be cursed, Dann right? bleibst du eben ähm, dreckig und du wirst verflucht werden. Okay, so, um, when you go back, go back to the notes. Geh zurück zu den Notizen. And go to Jeremiah 25. Geh zu Jeremia 25. Vers 15. Vers 15. Because every one of us is going to have to drink that cup. Weil jeder einzelne von uns muss diesen Kelch trinken. And we will either accept it, right? Or we will reject it. Wir werden ihn entweder annehmen oder ablehnen. It says, For thus saith the Lord God of Israel unto me, Take the wine cup of this fury at my hand, and cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it. And they shall drink, and be moved, and be mad, because of the sword that I will send among them. So what is the cup? Was ist der Kelch? It's the sword that comes upon the land, das right? Das Schwert, das über das land kommt. And Ezekiel was to warn them about the sword that was coming, right? Und Ezekiel sollte sie warnen vor dem Schwert, das kommt. It's the bitter cup. Das ist dieser bittere Kelch. That you have to drink, den du right? trinken musst. 
It says, Then I took the cup of the Lord's hand and made all the nations to drink unto whom the Lord had sent me to wit, Jerusalem and the cities of Judah. So where does it begin? Wo fängt es also an? It begins at God's house, right? Fängt Gottes Haus an. And the kings thereof and the princes thereof to make them a desolation and astonishment and hissing and a curse, right? Ein Fluch. Okay. So it's coming and it's going to make us a curse, right? It's coming and it will make us a fluch. Machen. Okay, but now go to Isaiah 51. Now go to Isaiah 51, verse 14. Vers 14. It says, The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed. Who's hastening? Also, wer eilt dahin? Those that realize they're in captivity. Right? He wants to be loosed. Right? And they should, that he should not die. Right? In the pit, nor that his bread should fail. But I am the Lord thy God that divided the sea. When did he divide the sea? When he delivered his people in the Red Sea. Right? Whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is his name, and I have put my words in thy mouth, and I have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand, that I may plant the heavens, and lay the foundations of the earth, and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. So this is after he's delivered them, right? Jetzt nachdem er sie befreit hat. But look, he tells you now about the experience you had to go through in order to be delivered, right? Aber über die Erfahrung, durch die du durchgehen musstest, damit du befreit werden kannst. Vers 17. Vers 17. Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord, the cup of his fury. Thou hast drunken the dregs of the cup of trembling and wrung them out. So how much did you have to drink? Wie viel musstest du trinken? All of it, right? Alles. There is none to guide her among all the sons whom she hath brought forth. Neither is there any that taketh her by the hand of all the sons that she hath brought up. These two things are come unto thee. Who shall be sorry, sorry for thee? Desolation and destruction and the famine and the sword. By whom shall I comfort thee? Right. And this is the experience when they came out of Egypt, right? Das ist die Erfahrung, als sie aus Ägypten kam. None pitied you, right? Keiner hatte Erbarmen mit dir. But there was one that did pity, right? Und es gab einen, der hatte Erbarmen. And when did he pity them? Und wann hatte er Erbarmen mit ihnen? When he was passing by, right? Als er vorüberzog. And passing by is not a positive thing. It means he's about to depart from you forever. Wenn right? er an dir vorüberzieht, dann ist das nichts etwas Positives. Und das bedeutet, dass er für immer von dir weggeht. Okay, we sing this song, Pass me not, o gentle Savior. Wir right? singen dieses Lied, Geh nicht an mir vorbei, o sanfter Heiland. It says, but hear my humble cry. Sondern right? hier mein, äh, höre meinen demütigen Ruf. When he's passing by, he's about to leave you forever. Wenn right? er vorüberzieht, dann ähm, ist er kurz davor, dich für immer zu verlassen. He's this jealous husband and he's giving you this bitter cup. To show you that you've been unfaithful, right? Okay, it says, Who shall be sorrow for thee, sorry for thee, desolation and destruction and the famine and the sword? By whom shall I comfort thee? Thy sons have fainted. What happened to them when this cup came? Mit ihnen geschehen, als der Kelch kam? They fainted. Sie sind schwach geworden. They lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull in a net. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. So when the Lord rebuked them, they fainted. Right? These are all the ones that suffered the curse. Right? Therefore, hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. Thus saith thy Lord, the Lord, and thy God, that pleadeth the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said to thy soul, Bow down, that we may go over. 
and thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. So many classes do we see here? Wie viele Klassen können wir hier sehen? Two, right? Zwei. One that faints at his rebuke and the other one that he takes the cup from them and he now gives it to the nations that persecuted them, right? Also die einen, die ähm, wenn sie das trinken, ähm, schwach werden und die anderen, die ähm, wo er dann ihnen den Kelch wegnimmt und den Nationen gibt, die sie zuvor verfolgt haben. Okay, go to this next quote. Geht zu dem nächsten Zitat From von Ewi. It says, God has shown me that he gave his people a bitter cup to drink, to purify and cleanse them. It is a bitter draft, and they can make it still more bitter by murmuring, complaining, and repining. But those who receive it thus must have another draft, for the first does not have its designed effect upon the heart. And if the second does not affect the work, then they must have another, and another, until it does have its designed effect, or they will be left filthy and pure in heart. I saw that this bitter cup can be sweetened by patience, endurance, and prayer, and that it will have its designed effect upon the heart. So when have you got to have patience, endurance, and prayer? Wann musst du eben Geduld, ähm, Ausdauer und Gebet haben? When the sword comes upon you, right? Wenn das Schwert über dich kommt. Because the sword is the bitter cup, Weil right? Weil das Schwert ist dieser bittere Kelch. And it will have its designed effect upon the hearts of those who thus receive it. And God will be honored and glorified. His glory will shine forth, right? Seine Herrlichkeit wird hervorleuchten. It is no small thing to be a Christian and to be owned and approved of God. The Lord has shown me some who profess the present truth, whose lives do not correspond with their profession. They have the standard of piety altogether too low, and they come far short of Bible holiness. Some engage in vain and unbecoming conversation, and others give way to the rising of self. So, what did Isaiah have revealed to him? Was wurde dem Jesaja also offenbart? His vain conversation, right? Seine nichtigen Unterhaltungen. We must not expect to please ourselves, live and act like the world, have its pleasures, and enjoy the company of those who are of the world, and reign with Christ in glory. We must be partakers of Christ's sufferings here if we would share in his glory hereafter. Right? We must receive those things which reveal to us, right, that we are running after other gods. Right? Wir müssen diese Dinge erhalten, die uns offenbaren, dass wir eben nach, also anderen Göttern nachrennen. And he's constantly showing us this, right? Er zeigt uns das beständig. And the more we refuse it, the more bitter the cup is going to get until this final test, right? Und je mehr wir uns ähm, also dem weigern, desto bitterer wird es bis zu diesem finalen Test. Where he's going to make you drink that whole cup, right? Wo er dann machen wird, dass du den ganzen Kelch trinkst. He said, if we, we seek our own interest, how can we best please ourselves instead of seeking to please God? and advance his precious suffering cause. We shall dishonor God and the holy cause we profess to love. We have but a little space of time left in which to work for God. Nothing should be too dear to sacrifice for the salvation of the scattered and torn flock of Jesus. Those who make a covenant with God by sacrifice now will soon be gathered home to share a rich reward and possess the new kingdom forever and ever. Okay, it's talking about those that have received this cup, the work now that you must do, right? Sprich jetzt über diejenigen, die diesen Kelch erhalten haben und dann das Werk, was äh, sie dann tun müssen. Okay, once you have received God's glory, you must go forth and do the work, so right? Sobald du Gottes Herrlichkeit erhalten hast, musst du vorwärts gehen und das Werk tun. Okay, so go to Hebrews chapter 12. Und geh zu Hebräer Kapitel 12. <lacht> It says for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. 
What was he warning you against? Also für was warnt er dich? Fainting. Mm. Dass du nicht äh, schwach bist. Okay, remember we read all those men fainted at his rebuke. Wir right? haben gelesen, all diese Leute wurden schwach ähm, wegen seinem Tadel. So he, he's saying, consider Christ who endured all those sinners when they came against him, right? Also er sagt, betrachtet ihn, der eben all das ausgehalten hat, als diese Sünder gegen ihn kamen. Lest you be weary and faint, right? Wenn nicht müde und schwach werdet. Okay, just hold yourself in place there and just go back to Hebrews 10. Also haltet euren Platz because hier. Because it's referring back to this. Und geht zu Hebräer 10, weil darauf bezieht es sich. Okay, But we are not of them, we draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So how did how are they saved here? Wie werden sie hier gerettet? By believing. Indem sie glauben. Believing what? Was glauben? No, that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking what it says believing what? What did they believe that caused them to say be saved? Also was haben sie geglaubt, dass verursacht hat, dass sie gerettet werden konnten? Yeah, the, 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 the revelation when it came to them, right? Die Offenbarung, als sie zu ihnen kam. They believed what God said about them, right? Sie haben geglaubt, was Gott über sie gesagt hat. They didn't faint and, and, and when he rebuked them, right? Sie wurden nicht schwach, als er sie getadelt hat. You, you'll see this in a moment, right? Ihr werdet das gleich noch sehen. And Go to uh, Galatians, Galatians, chapter 6. Chapter 6. Which verse is it down? Nine. Verse nine. Yes, there we go. So, verse 9. In fact, let's begin in verse 7. It says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall also of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we what? Faint not. Right? Okay, this is what I was, the point I was looking for, right? So you got to not become weary. Right? And well doing, right? Du sollst also nicht müde werden im Gutes tun. Okay, so go back to um, Hebrews. Geh zurück zu Hebräer. Chapter 12 und Vers 3. Kapitel 12 und Vers 3. And let's read that again. Wir lesen das nochmal. It says, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art what? Rebuked, Rebuked of him. Also werde nicht right. schwach, wenn du von ihm getadelt wirst. 
So the rebuke is this sword that's going to come against you, right? Der Tadel ist das Schwert, was gegen dich kommt. It's this cup that he's going to make you drink. Das ist der Kelch, den er dir zu trinken geben wird. And he's going to rebuke you for all the idols and other husbands that you've run after, right? Und er wird dich für all diese Götzen und andere Ehemänner tadeln, nach denen du gerannt bist. Because he's trying to save us, Weil right? Er versucht uns zu retten. It says, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as sons. So when things are revealed to you about yourself, what are you not to do? Wenn Dinge über dich selbst offenbart werden, was sollst du nicht tun? Yes, get all offended. Also, dass man Anstoß nimmt. Get all offended and say, well, that's not me that you're talking about, right? Anstoß nimmt und sagt, das bin nicht ich, über den du sprichst. We are to bear those things patiently. Go to God's word and say, okay, let's see if it's true or not. Wir right? sollen diese Dinge geduldig ertragen und zu Gottes Wort gehen und sagen, lass uns, also ich werde schauen, ob das so ist, was es sagt. Okay, it says, um, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son in whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of Spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. So he's going to make you drink this cup, right, in order to save you, right? Wird also machen, dass du diesen Kelch trinkst, um dich zu retten. And if when he gives you this cup, you call after him and confess your sins with a humble and contrite spirit. Right? Wenn er diesen, diesen Kelch gibt und du nach ihm rufst und ähm, deine Sünden mit einem zerbrochenen und zerschlagenen Geist bekennst, he will have mercy, right? dann wird er Gnade haben. Yes, that's ja. what it says in the law, right? Das sagt es im Gesetz. Okay, just, just go, to, um, go to Exodus uh, 33. Geht zu 2. Mose 33. In fact, go to, go to 34, excuse me. Geht doch zu Vers, äh, Kapitel 34. In, in fact, we'll look at both. Just go to 33 first, right? It says, also wir schauen uns doch Vers 18. beide an. Gehen wir zuerst zu Kapitel 33 und Vers 18. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Right? So, and if you go to chapter 34, verse 5. Wenn ihr zu Kapitel 34 und Vers 5 geht. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord, God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children, unto the third and fourth generation. So, if when the revelation reveals our sin, we confess it, he will have mercy upon us, right? Wenn die Offenbarung unsere Sünde offenbart und ähm, wir das dann bekennen, dann wird er eben Gnade mit uns haben. So even though he's passing by and he's going to leave us forever, if you call upon him, cry after him and say, Lord, save me, right? Obwohl er vorüberzieht und ähm, uns für immer verlassen wird, wenn du ihn dann anrufst und... Ähm, ja, anfließt und sagst, Herr, bitte hab Gnade mit mir. Or you can just say, no, I'm not accepting that. Oder du kannst sagen, nein, das akzeptiere ich nicht. And he will by no means clear the guilty, right? Dann wird er 
auf keinen Fall den Schuldigen freisprechen. It says your sin remaineth. Es sagt, right? deine Sünde bleibt. Okay. Now if we go to um, Psalm 119. Wenn es zu Psalm 119 geht. It's in the notes. Das ist wieder in den Notizen. Psalm 119, Vers 130. It says, the entrance of thy words giveth light. Now what was it that entered into Isaiah's heart? Was ist in das Herz von Jesaja eingedrungen? It was light, right? It's just the way it says clearly, light entered into his mind, right? So the drinking of the cup, right, when this terrible experience comes upon you, the Lord is going to send light, right? Also, wenn du diesen Kelch trinkst, also diese schreckliche Erfahrung über dich kommt, wird der Herr Licht senden. So when the sword comes upon you because of all your sin, he's going to give you an opportunity. He's going to send light and show you your sin, right? Wenn das Schwert über dich kommt wegen deiner ganzen Sünde, da wird er dir dann eine Möglichkeit geben und dir Licht senden, um deine Sünde zu sehen. It says, the entrance of thy words giveth light, it giveth understanding unto the simple. I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for thy commandments. Look thou upon me and be merciful unto me, as thou used to do unto those that love thy name. Right? And it's real easy if you read through Psalm 119, it's this whole experience. Also das ist sehr einfach zu sehen, wenn man durch ähm, Psalm 119 liest, das ist halt diese, diese ganze Erfahrung. Und Psalm 119 repräsentiert die Person, die nach Gott schreit, um zu werden gerettet. Right? Psalm 119 stellt diese Person dar, die eben ähm, nach Gnade ruft, um gerettet zu werden. Er pleading mit dem Herrn, um cleanse, purge und purify sein Herz. Er fleht mit dem Herrn, sein Herz zu reinigen und zu läutern. Okay, go to Romans 9. Geht zu Römer 9. In Vers 18. In Vers 18. It says, therefore, he, therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will he hardeneth. How many classes? Wie viele Klassen? Two classes. Zwei right? Klassen. Okay. So, and this is this allegory in, in Romans 9, right? Und das ist diese Allegorie in Römer 9. Where this Pharaoh, who the Lord raised up to show his glory, right? Also da war Pharao, den der Herr aufgerichtet hat, um seine Herrlichkeit zu zeigen. Okay, and there's these two classes, and the, the question comes, well, if God made these two classes, who, who can do anything to the contrary? Und es right? gibt diese zwei Klassen, und der Herr sagt dann, ähm, also, wer kann ähm, dem... Now, who can do anything to the contrary? Also, wer kann um, dem, dem entgegenwirken, but, das Gegenteil tun? And then he says that, yeah, don't you realize that the Lord did everything to try and save Pharaoh, right? Aber dann sagt es, um, habt ihr nicht gesehen, wie der Herr alles getan hat, um, um Pharao versuchen, also um ihn zu retten? But God knows, God knows who will accept his mercy and God knows who will reject it. Right? Aber Gott weiß, wer seine Gnade annehmen wird und wer seine Gnade ablehnen wird. Before they even do it, right? Bevor sie es tun. And that's why this, he uses these people that will reject his mercy in order that his name might be glorified. Right? Deswegen benutzt der Herr diese Leute, die seine Gnade ähm, ablehnen, damit äh, sein Name verherrlicht wird. In, in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 7. In Hebräer 3 und Vers 7. It says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if ye will hear his voice. Okay, now, where do we hear his voice? Wo hören wir seine Stimme? Let's see, look up. Yes, when he says, look up. Wenn er sagt, schaut auf. And when he says, look up, what does he do? Und wenn er sagt, schaut auf, was macht er? He takes away the veil. And you see into the most holy place, right? Du siehst dann in das Allerheiligste. And you see the law written there, right? Und du siehst, wie das Gesetz dort geschrieben steht. And it will reveal your sin, Und es right? wird deine Sünde offenbaren. 
It says, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. So why did they not enter into his rest? Warum sind sie nicht in seine Ruhe eingegangen? Because they hardened their heart when the truth was brought to their attention. Right? It says, So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest any be of you an evil heart of unbelief. So what is it unbelieving in? Also, und was glaubt es nicht? The revelation. Die Offenbarung. Right? This, this cup, when it, he makes you drink it and it reveals that you have slept with many other husbands. Right? Das ist dieser Kelch, den du trinken musst und der offenbart dann, dass du mit vielen anderen Ehemännern geschlafen hast. Okay, just let's see this, right? Lass uns das sehen. Go to John chapter 4. Geh zu Johannes Kapitel 4. Vers 15. Vers 15. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water. What's she asking for? Nach was bittet sie? The water of life. Das Wasser des Lebens. And how does he give you the water of life? Und wie gibt er dir das Wasser des Lebens? Yeah, with the cup. Durch den Kelch. You have to drink the cup, du musst right? den Kelch trinken. That he says, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. What did he reveal to her? Was hat er offenbart? All of her idols, right? All of these false gods that she's been married to, right? And what was her reaction? She realized, right, that this was God speaking to her, right? That this was the Messiah and he had revealed to her her sin, right? Did she accept the rebuke? Hat sie den Tadel angenommen? Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, go back to Hebrews chapter 3. Okay, zurück zu Hebräer Kapitel 3. Verse 12. Vers 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Now that's speaking about from the first birth to the second birth, right? Von der ersten Geburt bis zur zweiten Geburt. But while it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation, right? Das heißt 15. So in all these things that the Lord is revealing to us, right? All diese Dinge, die der Herr uns offenbart. He's revealing to us slowly so that we can begin to realize how far we are from him, right? Er offenbart uns das langsam, damit wir erkennen können, wie weit weg wir von ihm sind. Okay, so that when, when he brings this test, he brings this sword against us, right? Damit, wenn er diesen Test hier bringt, also dieses Schwert gegen uns kommt, we will not faint dass wir dann nicht schwach werden, when he rebukes us, right? Wenn er uns tatet. It won't be something that we didn't expect. Das wird nicht etwas sein, was wir nicht erwartet haben. Because he's already been revealing us step by step how far we are from him, right? Er hat uns schon Schritt für Schritt um, offenbart, wie weit weg wir von ihm sind. And we already begin to realize and confess our sin and, and accept these things that are being revealed to us, right? Wir fangen schon an, das, also diese Sachen zu bekennen und 
unsere Sünden zu bekennen und ähm, anzunehmen, äh, wie weit wir von ihm sind. Okay. We should already begin to be pleading with him to make our hearts pure. Wir right? sollten schon anfangen mit ihm zu flehen, unsere Herzen rein zu machen. And not looking at others at their faults and failings, und right? Nicht auf andere blicken mit ihren Fehlern und Versagen. But if we are to be like God, what should we have for others? Ja, wenn wir wie Gott sein sollen, was sollten wir dann mit anderen haben? Mercy, right? Whenever you see somebody else's faults, you should have mercy upon them. Right? Immer wenn du die Fehler von anderen siehst, solltest du Gnade mit ihnen haben. Okay. And the reason why we're not like that is because we are so far from God and we've got so many of our own husbands that we are blind to these things, right? Und warum 